What is up, everybody? Welcome back in to Tide Talk Live. Stacy Blackwood, Jake Thomas. Jake, believe it or not, the Alabama Crimson Tide men's basketball team is headed to the Final Four. Cannot wait to dive into that conversation here tonight. It's uh, been a long time since we've been able to get out an episode together, but excited to do this one. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing great, Stacy. Family's doing great. Uh, hope everybody had a great Easter weekend. Uh, first thing I can say is he has risen. Thank God, you know, for, for that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, excited about, about the run that, uh, the basketball team's on and excited about being back tonight with you. And, uh, thanks for holding down the fort while in my absence. No doubt about it. Yeah. Good to hear that everybody's doing well. Cannot wait to, to, to meet the baby and, and see how she's growing. But, uh, <laughs> If you're not already, guys, please like, share, and subscribe here on our YouTube channel. We're also free and available wherever you find your podcast, uh, part of the Believe Network. Uh, jump in the comment section. Let us know your thoughts on this run by the Alabama men's basketball team. Uh, would love to hear what everybody has to say about that as well. Uh, Jake, just speaking of that run, I, I mean, when you filled out your bracket a couple weeks ago, Jake, where did you see this team going? Because we didn't really have a chance to talk about that uh, before the tournament started. Honestly, I had them losing to, to St. Mary's, you know, in the second round. And, you know, I didn't want to do that, but I kind of – just the way that season has gone. I mean, Alabama's been pretty much in every game this year, but they could not seem like finish late in games, uh, just have just, you know, really bad turnovers in, in a situation, a uh, high-pressure situation. And, uh, I've, and the way St. Mary's has, you know, has played throughout the year, I've I seen – couple of their games you know you know sped run some of their games uh you know they they do like a half court uh, you know set they they slow slow tempo that really affects with alabama's you know tempo and and their psyche so i was like man st mary's may give us a challenge and uh, i had i the second round uh you know i had st mary's upsetting them yeah i, I was i was kind of torn between them them making it to the, I, I thought they'd win the first round game against charleston right. I, th I thought they'd get that win the second game was was kind of a toss up for me, but I thought the max that this team could accomplish was reaching the Sweet Sixteen and and, and being put out by probably North Carolina. But yep. but Jake somehow this team has strung together four straight wins after finishing the regular season and and the SEC tournament, uh, losing four out of their last six games. Mm -hmm. They've now won four games in the row, and they've reached the Final Four for the first time in program history. And the last two games, really, in particular, Jake, well, really, you can go back to that second-round game against Grand Canyon where they just had to tough one out, Jake. It wasn't their type of game. Uh, you know, some of their better players uh, were not at their best. Uh, but but I think the story of the tournament for Alabama, I think there's two stories. One, Mark Sears is having the best season an Alabama basketball player has ever had. Just one right. specific season, he's having the best year a, a player's ever had in his in, in the program's history. And then two, the second storyline is the fact that in every game, somebody off the wall has kind of stepped up and made mm -hmm. plays. Whether it was Mo Diabati, you know, in the last six, eight minutes of that game against Grand Canyon. Uh, whether it was Grant Nelson just completely – completely dominated North Carolina in that second half. Then you have the Clemson game, Jake, where both Jaron Stevenson and Nick Pringle just go off. Nick Pringle, just toughness and physicality, getting the offensive rebound. I think he drew 11 fouls in that game, made his free throws at, at a much higher rate than he's made all season right. long. Jaron Stevenson knocking down five three-pointers, really kept Alabama in the game in the first half. Just – the fact that a different guy stepped up for Alabama shows the depth of this team that I'm not sure people outside of Alabama fans that really follow the program closely knew that this team had. Yes, yeah, Stacey, that's one of the things I was going to bring up as well is, you know, last year we had Brandon Miller, and he was a superstar player. And it seemed like whenever times got tough, we just went to Brandon Miller, you know, and we was like, man, we got to have a play here. And, I mean, for the most part, he did it. But late in the season and in the tournament time, that kind of hurt because you saw what San Diego State did. You know, they they just kind of pressured Brandon Miller, and that was it. You know, uh, we, we really had no answer after that. We had great role players, but nobody really took that next step and was the second catalyst on that team or a third scorer option. This year's team is more team-oriented. You mm -hmm. know, Mark Sears is, is a great player, 
But, you know, when he's having an off night, like he, you know, he went 0 for 12, you know, shooting, I think, you know, and against Clemson or North Carolina, one of the two. And then you had the other guys step up. You had, like you said, Robin Griffin stepped up. You have uh, Grant Nelson has stepped up. Uh, somebody, like you said, has stepped up in, in the situation. And then when Mark Sears gets going, then that's when the team gets going. And then they usually just pull away in the second half. Uh, another thing I really want to uh, to real uh, say real quick, Stacy, is they. Uh, I think I have heard the team and uh, Aaron Estrada talk about it as well. But this is a lot of guys. This is their last game. Every mm-hmm. game that they they approach is their last game. So they got that mentality. Is like you know, if we go in here and we have a losers mentality, we're going to lose this game. And this is the last time I'm going to be playing for the University of Alabama. So I think that mentality has got has helped them along the way as well. Yeah, and I want to get to Coach Oates and what he means to this program here in a minute. But I, you, you mentioned the name Rylan Griffin. Mm-hmm. And, Jake, I, th- that dude has been so consistent throughout this right. tournament. I mean, you can count on him to knock down three or four threes every game yeah. in this tournament. And he just just makes plays, and he kind of makes those clutch sh- shots. You know, when Alabama needs a bucket, it seems like Rylan Griffin can get them a bucket uh, yep. from the three-point line. He's also done a tremendous job of of – defending the 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 opposite team's uh, best uh, perimeter scorer. So uh, kudos to Rylan Griffin. He has stepped up and become a leader on this team, not only with his play, but kind of the leadership that he displays. You know, just a toughness factor that he has. And I, I think when you when I just think about this team, Jake, it, it's the first word that comes to my mind is toughness. And yep. I'm not sure in November that's the word we would have used to describe this team. But no. here in March, Jake – and now, we're, now that we're into April and into the Final Four, I think the, the the number one thing you can say about this team is they are tough. And I'm not just talking about a physicality tough. I'm talking about uh, from from a mindset standpoint, uh, psychologically, that they're tough, Jake. And and they just they just find a way to make the plays that you have to make. And that's what it's all about when you get to March Madness. And and just kudos to this team for for figuring out down the stretch. And and I guess that's a good kind of segue into to talking about what Nate Oates has done with this program, Jake. And sure. and I, I'll let you start with that, Jake, because it's really hard to put into words what, what Oates means to, to the Crimson Tide faithful. You know, I'm going to go all the way back to the day he was hired, you know, and, and a lot of people was wanting, and my, myself included, there was a lot of big names out there. Uh, Rip Pitino was really, really heavily, you know, brought up and uh, – and, you know, Greg Byrne just flies out to Buffalo, grabs this guy, and just flies him back. And in the middle of their fly on the way back, he's like, here's your new, you know, head, head basketball <laughs> coach. They're like, wow. And then you go back and see what he did at Buffalo. It's like, man, this this dude, you know, he's legit. And and the the, the, the how he turned the, the program around so quickly is what is amazing. And, I mean, he's, you know, he's been there, I think, what, five years now? And he has won, you know, a couple of different uh, champion SEC championships. He's won regular championships, uh, you know, SEC championships. Uh, he's made it to at least a round, a round of 16, a Sweet 16 every single year. Uh, besides, besides one, I think he's been there. What he has done, I mean, before him, we was on the bubble every single, you know, watch on the watch body, you know, watching yeah. like, oh my gosh, we're, you know, are we going to get in this year? And a lot of times we did. We made the NI, you know, NIT tournament and then get beat there. Yeah. <laughs> now, now we don't have to worry about that. And and now we have people, you know, other, you know, organizations or, or other universities who is like keeping an eye on it. said, man, we want him. But Greg Byrne has made sure that he stays at Alabama for at least a little while longer with, with that massive buyout deal that I don't think anybody's going to touch right now for sure. No, Jake, and, and and you summed it up pretty well, Jake, the, the, how quickly he's been able to turn this program from a consistent bubble watch team <laughs> into a team that you're pretty much certain they're probably going to make it to the Sweet 16. Yep. And they're going to be right there in the thicket of in the SEC to either win the regular season or the conference tournament. He's won the conference tournament twice. He's won the regular season twice uh, in the SEC. He's made the Sweet 16 at least three times now. Uh, just now he's he's advanced to the final four. Uh, and, and you think about all the great teams that Alabama basketball's had in their, in their history, and you could argue 
that is far from a historical standpoint, this is the second best program in the SEC behind Kentucky. Right. Now you could, you know, you could, you could, you know, split some hairs and say, you know, well, LSU's been to four Final Fours and they have, they've never won a champion, you know. So there's, you, you could talk about other programs. Arkansas has got a national championship, um, but, you know, they hadn't really been in the SEC that long. So, uh, but, but th- th- this is a historically good basketball program who for a very long time was, you know, middle of the road at, in the SEC on bubble watch. And now in, in year five, of the Nate Oates era, they're playing uh, in the final four with the chance to win the national championship. And, uh, you know, it's just really phenomenal what Coach Oates has done, the fastest coach in program history to 100 wins. Uh, he's sitting at 117 and 63 right now uh, and uh, at Alabama. So just just phenomenal, Jack. He's, he's won uh, almost 70% of his games in the SEC. Golly. And the yeah. SEC is stacked right now. Yeah. Since he's been in the SEC, nobody has a better SEC winning percentage. No, Nobody has more wins. Nobody's won more conference tournaments or regular season titles than Nate Oates has at Alabama. This dude is now the pinnacle of SEC, college, uh, SEC basketball coaches, and, and that includes Rick Barnes. That includes John Calipari. That includes Bruce Pearl. And so th- th- this guy has become – you could make the argument he is a top five coach in college basketball, Jake. And if he was to go in this weekend and and, and beat UConn, and then maybe and play for the national championship, maybe even win it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy who's only 49 years old who has at least you know another 20 years of coaching at minimum, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, he could be setting up a, a phenomenal run of Alabama basketball, and 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 like you said, you know. Credit to Greg Byrne for locking him down, giving him a massive buyout, and and giving him you know a top five salary in college basketball because that's what he deserves. Yeah, I agree, and, and I really do think the arena is coming for him as well. You know that that's the next thing uh, to get to cement his legacy and to get him to to pretty much feel secure at Alabama. I feel like. Yeah, and and that arena thing will will happen once NIL has has kind of been taken care of. Yep, and, and it's not just kind of you know off the cuff the way it is now. So once NIL is taken care of, the money will be there for, for Coach Oates and, and the Crimson Tide to have that new arena, which they desperately need. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I just I, I just can't say enough about the job that Coach Oates has done because he, he's he's not only changed the type of players that album recruits, the type of system they run, but he's changed the, the mentality of this program. Mm-hmm. And and it, and it goes from his coaching staff to his players. I mean, dude, this guy law has ten new players and three new assistants from a Sweet Sixteen team who lost two first round NBA draft picks, mm-hmm. who had the best you know regular season and program history, went thirty one and six. There, he's coming off all of that, and all he does is lead this team to the Final Four. Unbelievable, <laughs> down Unbelievable. here. I yeah. mean, you, you're right. I mean, I, I think from a from a talent standpoint, it's probably a down year from what most seasons are going to be under Nate Oates. And uh, I think, you know, they, they kind of lost Charles Bediaco when they were not expecting that. When they recruited right. Noah Clowney, he was not supposed to be a one-and-done type dude. Mm-hmm. But but he was. He turned out to be, you know, kind of a year or two ahead of where, where, where they thought he might be when they brought him into the program. So just just it's crazy what Coach Oates has done. Uh, with for that basketball program and just excited that he's locked down and he's locked in at Alabama because he could build something really special in Tuscaloosa. Absolutely, man. I'm excited. You know, the, there's a lot of the, the future's bright, I should say, for the for the basketball team. Uh, as long as Nate Oates is there. And, and I want to uh, re- reiterate what you said. The style of basketball he has brought in is it's not a boring style. I mean, no. it is so fun to I mean once they get a get a defensive rebound, there, there's already three people streaking down down the court, and it's just so fun because they 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 can either get a layup real quick, they can dunk it, or they can get set up and then just have somebody open after moving the ball around, would make a three pointer. I mean, it's just incredible to watch. No doubt. I don't know if you saw the shot chart from the Clemson game, but it was a <laughs> yeah. thing of beauty. It, it was, was a thing of beauty. It was all three pointers and then a massive blob right under the goal. No two I mean, point shots whatsoever. I mean, and and look, I, I was talking. My my dad's an old school type guy, mm-hmm. but but he has he has come around to this to NATO style because 
we're, we're sitting there watching the Purdue Tennessee game yesterday, Jake, and and Tennessee's taking a bunch of those you know sixteen foot jump shots that are contested, and mm-hmm. and my dad said, why would you take that shot? Why would you take that shot? Right. I mean, w- w- when you you're taking a contested contested sixteen foot jump shot. You're not really gaining anything, even if you make it. Right. I mean, because you're just as likely to make a three point shot, and you're far more likely to make that layup at the rim. So it just it, it makes sense. And Coach Oates has just mastered on how to implement that style and get his players not only not only to execute that, but to be confident in it. Like I mean, like Jared Jared Stevenson's a, a perfect example of this. Yeah, this dude went through a freshman lull for a long time in the SEC, Jake. He struggled to hit shots. He he, mm-hmm. he struggled to defend. He 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 just he just was not – I mean, he wasn't playing very good. Right. He was playing like a 17-year-old would against grown men. I mean, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the dude kept playing. He kept shooting. He even airballed two shots against Clemson. But you know mm-hmm. what he done? He kept shooting, and he made five yeah. of eight. Yeah. I mean, I think there was that somebody made the joke that his first four – uh, he he went two of four on his first uh, four three pointers and and none of them touched the uh, rim. Yeah, <laughs> it was either nothing but net or air ball. Right. So, but it's just it's a testament to the confidence that Coach Oates has instilled in his players because they believe in what they're doing. They really mm-hmm. believe it, and that's what makes them so good. And and as we kind of look ahead to this UConn matchup in the semifinals, Jake, I I, I really believe Jake that if anybody's going to beat. UConn that's in the final four, it's Alabama because they up uh, that they, they present something that none of the other teams present, Jake. They they have the ability, like you saw, to hit 15, 16 threes in a game, Jake. And if you can get that many points, if you can get 40 to 45 points from the three-point line, you're gonna be in any game. And right. you can maybe steal a game even against a team as elite as UConn. So if Alabama can make those three-point shots, keep it tight. You never know what can happen. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. And you were talking about Nate Oates being a top five coach. Dan Hurley is probably the best coach in in, in uh, college. He's basketball. unreal, man, Jack. He He's is. unreal. He is, and, and I really like and respect him. He, he's mm-hmm. got a good a good program there. Uh, but I agree, Stacey. And this is not being homers. I'm just stating the fact the way Alabama has played defensively in the last couple the couple of games. I mean, they they stepped it up and you know started playing defense. I don't know. Grant Nelson said maybe it's just a good thing we started playing defense now. Yeah, it is. You know, I'm glad you are at this point in the season. Wish you would have done it back in December, but right now is where it's crucial. And uh, they they've been locked in on defense. Now I think UConn has struggled behind the arc and in, in, in this tournament. I think they're they're shooting less than thirty uh, percent. So you know, if Alabama is making those shots and UConn's missing them, Alabama's got a great chance to win this game. And, you know, like you said, Stacey, if they're shutting down Mark Sears, we've got to have a, a secondary player, maybe two, to step up, maybe a Jaron Stevenson or a Robin Griffin. Uh, Rotsell might come back and play in this game. If he does, that's going to be a big boost. Cause, I mean, we've been – honestly, we've been missing – you know, I think he's been averaging like 17 points a game or something. I mean, we've been missing that a little bit. So getting him back is going to probably free up somebody else because he's also a guy that can get, can get hot real quick. So you gotta you gotta pay attention to Mark Sears, you gotta pay attention to Rotsdale, and that's gonna leave Griffin, Nelson, somebody open and one on one situation. And and I believe especially after that North Carolina game, Grant Nelson's gonna win his one on one matchup ten out of ten times. Well, and and more specifically on this matchup with UConn, Jake, they have that seven foot three guy who is just a ridiculous rim protector. Yeah. You know, if I'm looking at this game and I'm Nate Oates, if that guy's in the game, I'm not really looking to score at the rim. No. I'm 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 driving and dishing mm-hmm. because you're not going to get over the top of him. And you may get no, lucky not. a time or two and he may foul you, but uh when he's in the game, I'm not really I'm not looking to attack the rim to score. Right. I'm 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 looking to attack the rim to 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 get to kick the ball out. And that's where right cell becomes that much more important because what that will allow you to do is play Grant Nelson at the five and, and have the, the the your four guards in the game with with Sears, Rotsell, uh Griffin and uh and and Nelson at, you know they're, they're, those are four good shooters who mm-hmm. I'm missing I'm missing somebody else but uh 
Uh, Estrada. Estrada. Estrada, yeah, Estrada, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you, so you have, you know, Sears, Estrada, Griffin, and Rotsill at four oh. yards, and then your five is Grant Nelson. You know, all five guys can shoot the three. That's going to draw the big guy away from the basket. So having Rotsill in this game is going to be huge just from, from a spacing standpoint and kind of freeing up that paint from their rim protector. So uh, if, if he can play, that's – and he's, you know, back to his old ways of shooting – I mean, Alabama's got a chance. Look, I I wouldn't. I'm not going to predict Alabama to win this game, but I'm not going to be one of those guys who would be surprised if Alabama did, because Alabama has the type of players, the type of system that could keep them in this game. And when you're in a game in the final few minutes, (laughs) shoot, it's March Madness. Anything can happen. Yeah, I agree. And and Illinois was was a good team, but. I, I think Alabama has the players where they're not going to go down on a 30-0 run. Like, like you know, Illinois could not make a basket to save their life in that game. And they have they kept it close to halftime. I think it was like 27-23 at halftime or 28-23. So they were in it, and then they just could not come out come out of the locker room and got cold uh, offensively. I, I think Alabama, if they do go cold, they're not going to go a long stretch like that. Without and it's not going to be like a 30 0 run. I think our defense has played a lot better. Uh, but I, I just think Alabama can stay in this game. And, and if, like you said, Stacy, if they stay in it, I think free throw is going to be crucial in this game, too. We've got to make a free ones as well. And we have been consistently really doing really good on that. Yeah, that, that's going to be important, too, Jake, like you said. But I, when I was watching that Illinois UConn game, that the fact that Illinois just kept trying to get to the rim. I know. I mean, I just – what's the point? I mean, yep. if, if he's going to block your shot and not foul you, don't – I mean, I, I say – like I said, it's, that's why right still is so important here, Jake. Yep. If, if if he's in that game, Jake, you play, put Grant Nelson at the five. Now, you're going to hurt defensively because of this mm-hmm. because Nelson's an okay defender uh, but uh, in, in the paint, but he's not the most physical guy down there. Right. He does okay, but – uh, so you you will hurt a little bit defensively. But to me, I think you want to make this game as wide open as possible. Mm-hmm. You spread them out, neutralize their shot blocker's ability to block shots by making him leave the basket and leave the rim and, and ch- chase Grant Nelson uh, you know, around the three-point line. Spread them out. And if you make them shots, Jake, mm-hmm. you never know what can happen. So I, I just think if, if a team's going to get – UConn in the final four, it's going to be Alabama in the semifinals. If I just, but the truth is, I would, <laughs> U, UConn's tough, dude. They're, they're, they're they really are. good. They're going to be tough to beat. But, you know, Nate Oates and this team are playing different. They, they, they got something different about them right now. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to bet against them. I'm not saying I'm betting for them to win, but I certainly wouldn't bet against them right now either. It's going to be a fun game, Stacey. I, I'm really excited uh, excited about the game. Um, but I'm, I'm with you. If there's a team in the Final Four that has a chance, I, I really feel like it's, you know, it's Alabama because, they, like you said, they can space you out. And if Grant Nelson is in that five and he draws that, that center out to him on the three-point line, then you maybe have a backdoor cutter that, that can go into, you know, to do a layup and stuff. There's a lot of possibilities. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you know, NATO's and that coach staff saw what Illinois was trying to do in their game, and they realized that hey, we're not going to do that. This is our game plan. We're going to stick to the game plan, and we're just going to go out there and play ball, and we'll see what happens when the scores when you know the scores final. Yeah, and and as we wrap it up, Jake, I just want to I want to close by saying, regardless of what happens on Saturday night, uh, I couldn't be more pleased with what this team has accomplished. Because I, they're they're basically p- playing with house money now, Jake. They, yep. they they for what they have and all they've went through as far as the roster turnover, the coaching turnover, um, the fact that they're here in the Final Four, unbelievable, just unbelievable. It is, man. It, it's so exciting, you know, that we have a secondary sport we can cheer for, you know, like like uh, basketball. We are we always have, but this is exciting times right now. This is like like we said earlier in the show. You know, we're no longer on bubble watch. We're not biting our nails and like, okay, we're going to be a 13 seed or a 15 seed. And, uh, you know, it's nothing like that no more. This is a team that's probably going to be in the top five seeding wise 
from here on out, you know, for just with, with Nate Oates, and, and it's incredible. So enjoy it while, while we have it. I, I'm sure, you know, we're, we're going to be there for a long time, and Nate Oates will as well. Uh, so just enjoy it. I, I know I am. No doubt about it. All right, guys. Hey, that's going to wrap the show up for today as we discuss Alabama's incredible uh, NCAA tournament run uh, by by Coach Nate Oates and the Crimson Tide. Unbelievable job by those guys. Kudos to them. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Give us a like and a share. Jump in the comments and let us know your thoughts on today's show as well. Uh, also free and available wherever you find your podcast, part of the Believe Network. But that's going to wrap it up, guys. We'll be back real soon. Cannot wait to to talk about w- whatever happens in the in the in the final four. We'll, we'll be here to talk about that. And then spring football is we're right in the middle of it as well. So we'll be talking about that here coming up shortly as well. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back real soon. But until then, roll tide. Roll tide.